and thank you for joining Winner Take All, where we talk about the constant battle between large tech monopolies and traditional incumbents. I'm very excited to have a special guest on today's show. We have Adrian Nussenbaum, the co-founder and U.S. CEO of Miracle. Adrian, great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Alex. It's a pleasure. And congrats for your, your work in this uh, revolution of platforms. Thank you. And, and likewise, my friend, you know, Miracle just raised a, a monster $300 million round, $300 million round which, which I want to get to here in a second. But, you know, let's just, let's just start at a high level, right? If, if we rewind the clock many a year ago when, when Miracle founded and, and a lot of where your core product is today, you know, it's working with these large enterprises that have e-commerce presences and you know many of them would be linear uh, business models as as we both talk about right and you say hey you know you need to embrace a marketplace there's all these third party sellers out there you need to sell additional products and you don't need to own that inventory and our tool our technology our our miracle products will help provide all those capabilities to build that seller side that you know that that ecosystem of sellers and give you this marketplace dynamic um, how did I do on that? Is that is that accurate? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I would I would I would just emphasize the fact that our value proposition is 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 a bit broader in the sense that we don't you know we don't just focus on enterprise large enterprise. If we pragmatically look at our over three hundred customers today, a third of them are digital. You know, pure digital businesses, either you know, startups that are just starting from scratch and saying, you know, we're starting a new business and B2B or B2C distribution or commerce. Should we adopt an old world linear business model or should we adopt kind of a newer business model? And and it's interesting to see that those those companies, despite being digital natives, decide to trust Miracle and work with us. And yes, 70% of our business indeed is, is working with, with businesses who, who have been around often for a very long time. And, and I think the, what's interesting and what, what makes our, our job interesting is so in the past, they did something great to become what they are. They, they created great stores. They created great products. They, they stored fantastic merchandise, but now they need to reinvent something new to, to still be great, but they have the opportunity to leverage what they've built. So that's kind of uh, indeed how we, we engage with them. It's helping them paving the, the next phase for them. Absolutely. And I mean, the, I think one of the really interesting things that kind of echoes your value prop to these, to these customers um, is that when I mean, you really you you partner with them in the sense that you're bringing them a SaaS solution, but you know I would say many SaaS solutions would be white labeled, right? I think what's really interesting is that when you work with your customers, um, you, you know, presumably you're just bringing so much value to the table that that they are building these seller ecosystems, and um, you know, Miracle's kind of co-branded in these endeavors, right? It's, it's kind of saying, hey, sign up for uh, this enterprise's marketplace business, you know, through the Miracle portal. Um, was it always that way? Or, or was that, you know, was there a tipping point in, in the journey where, you know, you were able to just create so much value or, or, or demonstrated success, like, you know, Best Buy, one of, one of, in Canada, I think one of your big success stories here, that, you were able to to kind of move into that more kind of partner co-branded model or or was that always the model i think it 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 was in a way uh, it became the model as we grew and and ourselves created platform economies and platform dynamics around our own business but if you think of a of what a platform a marketplace is it's as you know well it's it's three parties the the end buyer or customer, the, the operator of the platform, and the vendor, seller, partner, however you want to call it. So from, a, from that kind of view, Miracle is completely hidden to the end buyers. They don't know about Miracle. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, Miracle is, is closely connected to the operator because these are our clients and the people we, we, we help. And then to what you were talking about from a seller perspective, Miracle has also become a, a brand. And if you think of what really matters to those sellers, it's, it's speed of integration, speed of onboarding, it's security and scalability. And it's also uh, the efficiency of how they're going to be able to operate across multiple platforms. So now we see very often that when we, we work with a new customer and they start having conversations with potential partners, very often those partners tell them, oh, you're using Miracle as a marketplace solution. Great, because we already have the APIs, the connections, or we've done the integration. So indeed, this has been, you know, it's a journey uh, more than like started day one and never stopped. I know where you're going. I want to get there in a second. I think one, another example of how you can kind of help that onboarding, that connectivity with the sellers is, I mean, you, you, you've raised this $300 million round. You're hiring, you know, 500, 500 engineers uh, from the press release. You know, one of those critical challenges for sellers on board is product mapping, right? You have a centralized product catalog. You know, uh, the you know, there's an interview with with the Best Buy um, Canada customer. He said, "Hey, if we can get multiple sellers listing on the same product listing, that's going to drive value to that end customer, right?" So that's another thing that you can, you know, I would presume further invest in your ability to kind of map your sellers' products to these different product catalogs. Uh, you know, through this tech that, that you have built and will continue to invest in. Is, is that a good example of how this round will help just continue to invest in tools like product mapping? Yeah, I mean, product, ma product mapping is, is key to things that are fundamental when you're trying to create a platform dynamic, which is, you know, scalability, network effect, and you know, satisfaction of the platform participants. So it's, it is indeed one of our key investment of, of, you know, areas of investment along many others, but yes. Going back to what you were, you were just saying, uh, where, you know, now you have multiple customers in the same industry, right? Um, I think Kroger just launched uh, this year, 2020. Albertsons launched a couple of years ago. And so you, you were kind of alluding to this. Are you, are you, you know, you, you're starting to see, Hey, you know, sellers saying, Oh, well, you know, I already know miracle in, in the food industry. I've already maybe integrated cause, uh, there's a, there's another miracle powered marketplace, you know, already there. Do you see that, you know, is that a net positive for new clients like Kroger or, are there any considerations to to allay any concerns if if they say, hey, well, you know, Albertsons is already in food, you know, uh, um, why do I want to use the same solution? How do you how do you see the, you know, what's what's the the pros and cons um, to to kind of overcome any of that? Uh, yes, I, I, there's no real there's no real cons. I think miracle is a is a is a technology enabler so our mission is to allow people to evolve their business model into a business model of platform which we believe is key to be successful in the future what's interesting is that if if we go back to the roots of what should be driving anyone's business and our friend jeff at amazon has has talked about it a lot it's customer the customer and what we're seeing, which is driving this kind of growth for our company and accelerated demand and, and I would say ability for traditional businesses to overcome their fears, because this is key in becoming a platform business, is the fact that the need and the demand is coming from customers. And yes, it's coming from the end customers who want more choice, more pricing, more depth, more flexibility in how they buy but it's also coming from a new customer who are the, the sellers, the, the partners of these platforms, who, who are telling uh, you know, those, those, some of those companies that you named, hey, uh, we have those great products, we would love to work with you, but we want to do it in a marketplace way. We want to retain 
the, the ability to, to set price. We want to, we, we're fine working within your rules that you will have set, but we, we want to be working as marketplace sellers. We don't want to be working as traditional suppliers. So this is really, for me, one of the key evolution. Enter uh, Miracle Connect, right? Uh, this was a, I mean, you actually launched this maybe last year. Is that right? Um, my understanding is you're saying, Hey, you know, we have relations and, and brand and visibility with these sellers exactly to your point, right? These sellers want to sell through more and more marketplaces. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an Alibaba esque model, right? Where you're, where you're not taking transaction fees, but what you're saying is, Hey, I want to help other you know, e-commerce, miracle-powered marketplace businesses um, market or advertise and connect with other sellers. And we're going to help aggregate these sellers and, you know, provide that kind of uh, centralized meeting point to, to help sellers find more uh, e-commerce marketplaces to work with. Is, is that right? It's a very interesting um, new or, or relatively new initiative for you guys, it seems like. Yes, Connect is is clearly uh, the key priorities of the, the years to come at Miracle. And when you think of what it is, and I'm sure looking at your background and everything you've written, and which by the way is excellent, you, it, will, it will kind of normally resonate, but Miracle started as a technology platform enabling platform and marketplace businesses. And with Connect, Miracle is becoming a platform business technologically enabling platform businesses and also helping those platform businesses accelerate their growth. And, um, and that's kind of the nuance. Connect is, it's typically the, the, it's the example of what we're telling our other, our clients to do it. You've gotten to a point where you have assets, you have maybe the ability to drive demand, you have a great brand, you have a partner ecosystem, and all these people are, are, are not connected. They're, they're kind of operating in silos on your linear kind of pipeline business model. If you create a platform business, you're going to create this network effect and scale by having more of a platform play around. Them. It's exactly what happened to Miracle. A year and a half ago, we got to a point where we had hundreds of clients operating marketplaces, tens of thousands of sellers being on those marketplaces and dozens of technology partners developing tools to, to help those sellers, you know, in fulfillment, B2B payment, uh, pricing intelligence. And Connect was really the natural evolution, which was, you know, those these people are connected to Miracle in some ways, but they're not automatically connected to one another. So that's what Connect is going to do. And ultimately, it's scale, speed, and agility uh, for our customers and, and their partners. Yeah, it really is. As you said it, right? It's, it's kind of where you had this... I mean, you still do, right? You have this linear SaaS business, uh, and now you're kind of branching out into uh, you know, eating your own dog food, kind of embracing your own platform model. And I can see you know, for, let's say, that 70% of large enterprises where it could help them get some incremental sellers right from from Miracle Connect. And the really cool thing I see with this is for maybe that 30% or whatever portion that um, kind of like e-commerce startup uh, customer segment comprises, I mean, this seems like a huge boon to them because, you know, they w- it, w- it would be much harder for an e-commerce startup to kind of get traditional access to sellers just because they don't have as much demand. Um, or they might be in specific niches. So by kind of aggregating these uh, sellers together and providing that central meeting point, I mean, that seems like, I mean, and, and we all know there's so many of these e-com startups that are, you know, that are that are trying to, in, in our very kind of pro marketplace, but um, they have their own chicken and egg problem to solve. So this seems like a, like a huge opportunity, huge growth opportunity for Miracle. Um, uh, uh, particularly in that segment. Is that how you're seeing it also? Yes. I mean, I, I think of like a few customers that recently went live. Um, you know, there, there's a company called Verishop, uh, which, you know, was, was launched one, by one of the founding members of Snap. And, and, uh, and to see them in the just, you know, two or three months be able to go live and, and kind of create this Verishop, verified shop kind of offering 
where they're working with direct to consumer brands and, and they're able to, to be extremely fast uh, go to market. Uh, we, we launched comp- uh, a marketplace with a company called Motherly, which is a, a, a great, uh, uh, initially kind of more of a blog or, or media company focused on, on, on women around motherhood and, and being able to quickly, uh, same thing, very agile, launch a, a marketplace with immediately a number of partners being, being onboarded on the platform. And, and, you know, in another kind of uh, spectrum, companies like um, The Knot Worldwide, I don't know if you're familiar with them. I mean, mm-hmm. there, there, there's a so, so big platform for wedding and organizing wedding and you know, typically trying to, to accelerate commerce. And, and those companies really, as you say, benefit and will benefit more and more from, from this ability uh, that we will have to provide them with kind of an end-to-end service. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really interesting. It's, you know, it, it's it's kind of meta, right? It's, uh, you know, it's kind of like Roblox, which is like, you know, uh, it's like a plat- it's like a metaverse of games, right? It's, it, it's like you're kind of, you're providing these sellers and you're kind of platformizing it at the same time. It, it actually, it, you know, if, if you look at the long game, right, you know, where, where does all of this, um, you know, where does all of this end up, right? I mean, we see in this short to medium term when you have, um, when you have a bunch of platforms and marketplaces competing, it's good for the sellers and the consumers, right? When there's like six or seven different versions of Uber, the sellers are getting thousand dollar referral or the drivers are getting thousand dollar referral bonuses. And you know, the, when the platforms compete, the consumers and producers tend to win, right? So by helping to level the playing field when it comes to, you know, attracting sellers, um, you know, that's, it, it kind of starts to remind me of, um, another friend of ours, Ben Thompson at Stratechery and his aggregator theory, where, you know, when I look at platforms and business models, uh, they have this two-sided network effect, the, the, right, the, the demand and supply side network effects that, that work with each other. You have that chicken and egg game. For his aggregator theory, it's mostly just focused on saying, well, you know, supply matters uh, less and what is paramount is capturing demand, right? And you know what we see there is um, we see that these uh, large, ener- you know, large kind of tech businesses are able to just um, over-index and and leverage that demand because they can take advantage of supply by by aggregating supply. Do you think long term? Do you think this helps? Someone like a, a Walmart, right? Let's say who's trying to expand supply, but um, they, you know, they have a lot of demand, but their marketplace is still growing. For example, um, could this could this also be a boon to companies like them, you know, that are trying to compete against Amazon, for example, but have demand but always need more supply? I mean, yes, I I think that there is no there is no alternative to to platforms. That's kind of a, a broad uh, statement. But I think that if you think very simply, the, the digitization of the world creates a situation where we've always said the customer dictates, the customer dictates. But it wasn't true. It wasn't true. Like, Yes, you know, when you walked in a store and you were not happy, you could say, I'm not happy, I'm leaving the store. But you could not dictate what you would find in the store. It was dictated by sourcing, gross margin, aisle, uh, uh, advertising of the, ve- of the brands and the vendors. And the, it w- Today, the customer dictates whether we like it or not. And this is something that was directly resulting from digitization. And, it, and it's just the beginning. Um, so in a world where the customer dictates, you need somehow to be able to consolidate, to make sure that you reach the customer's expectation. And until someone comes up with another business model, 
the business model of platforms remains the only economically viable and scalable business model to create consolidation. Whether you want to consolidate the whole world, like Amazon or Walmart, or whether you want to consolidate the niche of toilet plumbing supply, you know? Uh, they're, they're, and I, I'm a big believer in niche business models, by the way. Uh, powered by platforms. I, I absolutely believe that there is, and we see it with our customers, you know, the, the billions and billions of GMV that are driven on our platform, they did not exist one, two, three, five years ago. So, and it's not suddenly uh, money that came down from the sky for customers to spend. It's money that shifted from one, one channel to, to another. And, and that's, that I believe is a proof of the fact that you, Everyone needs to participate in this platform economy. And I believe that you can be very successful with a thousand partners. You will be even more successful with 10,000 partners. Yeah, you need, you need more supply. That supply is going to give you that wider product catalog. Um, hopefully, you know, more pricing competition and all that value then rolls back to that consumer. Um, I guess just, you know, last question on Connect. And then, and then I think, you know, it'd be great to just hear more about. Um, you know, more broadly, you know, where, where you see the company um, going and, and other key priorities for you. But, you know, with, with the large enterprises here that I, I guess are the majority of your business, by aggregating these sellers and, you know, leveraging kind of the, the brand equity that you've, that you've built with these sellers, the, the tools that you've built with the sellers, um, and now enabling, say, more e-commerce uh, startups to come in or, or potentially, say, you know, um, a large player like a Walmart. Um, do you see that uh, servicing those customers um, who could also be considered these large enterprise competitors? Do you see that hurting those large enterprises' ability to you know, build their own marketplace businesses? Uh, no, in the sense that um, it, what I'm going to say is, is going to be a bit of a, maybe sound a bit as a paradox, but market, having a marketplace may be seen as a competitive advantage today, but we believe that mid to long term, it's it's going to just be a, a mandatory requirement and 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 it's in a way it's it's like the second or the third leg of the stool however you like to sit i mean two legs it's a bit hard but you know you may be very uh, balanced uh but that's kind of the way we we look at it we often get the comp the question of and i could ask you the question but how many marketplaces can they be but did, did anyone ever ask the question, but how many e-commerce stores can they be? Would Shopify be what it is today if, uh, if 15 years ago people said, oh, you know, you can't have uh, as many uh, e-commerce stores because it's going to be online, so you don't have to drive and anybody can, can go anywhere, so they will focus on bullshit. There's millions and millions and millions of e-commerce stores today. And, and nobody is asking the question, how many e-commerce stores can there be? So similarly... I think that uh, what may be seen as a competitive advantage today to, yes, to be the first mover is an advantage in any business. It's scarier, it's riskier, uh, but then you know what happens when you don't do it. But not doing it at all is not an option in the, in, in digitization dictates platforms or platform strategies. And I think that's where, also, or I see you guys expanding is, is saying, okay, in a world where there's a bunch of different platforms and marketplaces, um, if everyone has a platform, if everyone has a marketplace, well, then how do you compete, right? And what are the other services that you can bundle around that uh, and, and so on and so forth? And so you're making a lot of investments in those areas as well, right? Yes, we, we are making investments in those, in those uh, areas but they will benefit all our clients. I think that what's more interesting, and this is really a strategy behind Connect, is it's even if, 
the rules remain the same. You need to please your customers. And if I'm just looking to replace my, uh, my, my, uh, my sink and, uh, and I just need a basic thing because I'm going to do it myself, I might go to a specific website and I would be interested in availability, price and delivery time. But if I am a, a looking at a B2B transaction where I need many, many things and I need solutions with those things and maintenance and parts and yes, I'm buying things, but I'm buying things in, in, in a completely different uh, mindset. And so I truly believe that there will be a marketplace and many marketplaces where I can buy that sink and I will maybe choose one over the other because one has installation services, one has specific warranty, one has a specific loyalty program. And then I will choose maybe another one because it has specific B2B payments, capabilities, specific invoicing. Uh, it can connect to my e-procurement tool. So th this is really where we're investing. It's, it's being either owning those tools or having direct integration with providers of those tools that allow to create those, those differentiated marketplaces, though all are marketplaces or have marketplace as a component of their business. Love it, Adrian, thank you. And, and I know we're, we're kind of running up here on, on the butt of time, but you know, let me just brag a little bit about you guys. I mean, I feel like every analyst out there, you know, has you in the upper right quadrant, right? Like you're, 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 publishing stuff with Forrester, they're ranking you. I feel like Gartner's ranking you. I mean, what are some of the, the, the accolades uh, that, uh, that you could speak to better than I could that, you know, that have kind of highlighted Miracle's success here? So, I mean, uh, I, I think the, the, the most important accolade in it, you know, is the fact that we have uh, uh, happy clients. Uh, we have also courageous clients. And uh, because they take risks, they, 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 they venture into evolving their business model. Uh, we, we gave them a name two years ago. We call them platform pioneers. So we were really investing in this platform pioneer program. And, uh, and pragmatically, uh, our, our, you know, one of the things that came up during this fundraising process was abnormally low churn rate for software comp for a SaaS software company. And there was nothing. I would say that talks best to, to the, to the, to the, um, to the business. I, I also think that um, we, we, we have people at Miracle who are very excited to, to be part of a company that is creating a market because, you know, you know, also as well as me that uh, sometimes it feels like preaching in the desert. And, uh, and not everyone in, in, enjoys it or is suit, suited to, to preach in the desert. I think that, you know, during COVID, uh, when, the, when the crisis uh, started, and, and we, we had this kind of unique, uh, I would say, company-defining moment where the, the French government called us and said, hey, uh, there is this shortage of PP supply. We feel that if Miracle was to be able to stand a platform that could connect supply and demand, we could help people and workers and you know essential workers and save lives. And at Miracle, it took 48 hours, which is you know quite rapid, to to stand a fully functional B2B marketplace, which operates still today unfortunately we felt we were going to have to shut it down in the summer but now it's almost as high as ever but it, it, it within 48 hours we demonstrated that you know the platform model is a great business model we demonstrated that the miracle people are amazing people who, who work hard and ultimately there were millions and millions and millions of, of, of products that were sold miracle did this entirely for free for the french government and um, and so yeah, beyond the accolades of you know, it's great to have the recognition of Forster and Gardner, and I think our clients and our people is is really at the end what um, what makes it uh, very meaningful. And and you know the fact that we're bringing satisfaction to our shareholders. 
because it's important in this world also, let's not be naive, uh, derives from this naturally, which is, uh, which is encouraging. Absolutely. Well, um, Adrian, I, I, you're a busy guy. Um, you got, you're now, now a unicorn company officially. So that's, uh, that's always a fun club to be in. And, um, you know, we wish you the best, hope to have you back on the show and, and, uh, and, and we'll certainly be following and watching all the stuff that you guys do and bringing these marketplaces, uh, to, to fruition. So thanks so much for joining us. No, thanks, Alex. Thanks for everything you're doing. I I'm seeing your book here on the, on the video and I'm thinking I'm going to bundle it in our, in our, uh, in our holiday gifts uh, basket <laughs> to our to our customers because I think it's an excellent read and uh, and thanks for your show and I hope to uh, see you soon. Likewise, thank you, sir. Have a good one. Bye bye. It was great having Adrian on. Um, we will uh, we will have another winner take all session next week. Thank you everyone for joining us and we will talk to you soon.